For our next example, let's look at example number 20 from section 7.1. This is pretty representative of really the whole first part from 17 to 28. This one example is like them all. The only thing that's going to change is the different numbers that are involved. Um, but you'll see that as you get into the homework. But let's look at this one. I typed it out for us. This is the same wording that's being used in the book. So they're looking at a drug, OxyContin. And it's an opioid type of drug, and that's why they're saying it's dangerous and addictive um, and can also be lethal. And so um, they're looking at this drug, and what they looked at was some trials that were taken. 227 subjects were treated with the drug, and 52 reported that they had nausea. And so what they want us to do is to construct a 95% confidence interval uh, estimate for the true percentage of OxyContin users who develop nausea. So they'll interchange the word percentage and uh, proportion, but uh, I'll show you what that means in the end. So here's what we know. They want to know that the whole idea is that um, we get a confidence interval for the nausea. So the first thing we need to do is find a nausea rate. And so we want to get p hat. What was the nausea rate for the subjects that were given the OxyContin in the clinical trials? And it was 52 out of 227. And when you run 52 divided by 227 on your calculator, you get out to three significant digits, 0.229. So that's going to be our base. Our end answer in terms of the confidence interval estimate is going to be 0.229 plus or minus an error. So we know that it's not perfect because we didn't look at every OxyContin user. Um, and we're seeing that of the ones we did, roughly 23% experienced nausea. But since we know it's not perfect, let's get that window of values where it could be well, not where it could be, where we're 95% confident that the true percentage of all OxyContin users who develop nausea will be in there. So you know what we have to do maybe by now. we got to use this formula to come up with the error. So I'll briefly write it down. And let's fill in what we know. Now, how are we going to get the Z alpha over 2? Hopefully by now you realize that's going to come from the confidence level. Now the confidence level will be stated. I think we have some homework problems where they don't state it. Whenever they don't state it, they use the most common one as 95. It should say in the back, answers vary, but if you use 95%, this is what we'd have. And so R has happens to be that 95%. So in our problem, it was given in the problem. I can't circle it for some reason but the 95% is in that part A. So they're asking us to do that. Well, if we go to the chart and look in the bottom right hand corner, it's going to tell us the number is 1.96. So since it was a common critical value, we already know what it is. P hat, we calculated as 0.229. Q hat will be one minus that. So I'll write that off on the side here in case that's not sticking with somebody. And so if we look at 1 minus 0.229, we get 0.771. Right, so this is 0.771. And then they told us how many users we were dealing with. We were dealing with 227. That is going to calculate our error. So notice that as our sample size increases, as this 227 number gets bigger, that our error would drop. That's exactly what we expected would happen. but. Um, it's not going to get bigger for us. It is what it is. So let's go answer this question. Let's on our calculators take 1.96 times the square root of 0.229 times 0.771 divided by 226. Make sure that's all underneath the square root. And it should be 227, so let me fix that. And then hit equals. And when I hit equals, my error that's produced is 0 0.05466232 is what I'm looking at. Now we're going to round that, but usually I round it to the exact same place that my p hat's rounded. So I get 0 0.229, and what I have to add and subtract from that is 0 0.05. 
I guess 5.5 five is what I would use, rounding that off. So we're almost done. We have to take our 0.229 and subtract away the 0 0.055 and come up with the low value of 0.174 is less than. Well, what's it going to be less than? What are we trying to estimate? We're trying to estimate P, not P hat. You'll lose points if you put a hat on that P because we know exactly what came out of the sample. Out of the sample came the P hat, which I'm underlining now at the top of the screen. We know that value. What we didn't know is what's happening for every person that takes Oxycontin. And we're saying, well, they're going to have a headache rate above 0.174, but no bigger than 0.284. Now, if you remember the question, this is the confidence interval for the proportion, but the question was a confidence interval for the percentage, if you see that up top. So we should technically change this to be a percentage and say 17.4% is less than P, which is less than 28.4%. That would better answer the question. If I asked you to write this in words, which I sometimes will write or on a test, it would look like this. We are... 95% confident that the proportion of OxyContin users that experience nausea is between 17.4% and 28.4%. That's what we're finding out. We, we, we know that the true percentage is somewhere in that range. We don't know exactly what it is, and we'll never know unless we talk to everybody. And so, But we know it's in that range. If we look at Part B, they like us to compare that to um, the 45 subjects who were given a placebo. They weren't given any Oxycontin, but they thought they were, and their headache rate was between 1.93% and 20.3%. And they're asking, what do we conclude? Well, because there's overlap, remember, our, this is what's happening for the non-Oxycontin people and how they're experiencing nausea. The Oxycontin people, what we found in Part A has this, has a 17.4% to 28.4%. And notice that there's overlap between those. There's, if we look at the top one and the bottom one, there's common values of P that could be there. So for instance, P could absolutely work out in the top one to be um, something like uh, 20%. And 20% can work out of the bottom one as well, right? It's in both of those. So because it's in both, it would not be appropriate for us to conclude that Oxycontin increases our likelihood of getting headaches. We could only say that if the Oxycontin headache rate was definitely going to be above the non-Oxycontin users. But because there's some overlap, they're going to say... Um, it's possible that the Oxycontin treatment group is experiencing the headaches at the same rate as the non-Oxycontin. Therefore, we don't have to, from a Food and Drug Administration um, point of view, advertise that it causes nausea. This is kind of the general way that you'll go through every problem. You'll be given a problem. You'll typically have to find p-hat. You'll use the confidence level statement to come up with the Z alpha over 2, you'll plug in the numbers and add and subtract that error to the to whatever you got was the p hat. And then I like you to write those sentences, so get in the habit of writing those sentences. They're modeled in the book as well. Okay.